But I know in, in the scripture when uh, Joshua was getting ready to enter into the land, they came and they made new covenant again. There was a change of leadership. There was something new that was going to have to be not only renewed from what was lost out of the wilderness with the other generation, but it was something new was going to happen. They were getting ready to walk into a different land and a different experience that they never experienced before. There was going to be a place when they walked into that land, yes, God would be there, and yes, God went before them, but there was going to be a lot more of obedience that they need to, that was required of them. Because God had laid out in the wilderness uh, of the, the law and the covenants and everything, and how to prosper and everything, and what would be the failure of, of their uh, bad decisions. And so God walks into a new fresh day. Joshua is ready to fight. They're going to be fighting differently. God was going before them in the battle. God used them in the wilderness at different times to overcome enemy. But yet over here, this, this one, there's going to be ones they live amongst. And it's different. It's a struggle a lot of times when we were among things. When we're among things. I'm just hearing what the Spirit of God is saying right now. When we're among things. When we have situations. And we have voices. And we have reports that people would speak into our lives. And it's difficult when we're surrounded by all of these ground troops, if you might call them, because they're not from God. If you get a bad report, it's not a report from God. But yet it doesn't stop the reports from coming. Just because five people agree doesn't mean that it's true. What matters is true is when God has spoken to you and has spoken to you in the Word of God. That's what matters, that it's true. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done. It doesn't matter how successful you've been. What matters is where you're at today. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, renewal. And the Lord took me to John 3 when he began. And I stayed with John 3 here. And we're just going to read it. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak. Is that okay? Right. So we're starting with the first verse. Where there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. I'll say this, a skeptic. A skeptic. He believed, but he wasn't too sure. That's the position that he had. He was a ruler of the Jews, but he was a Pharisee. But it says, The same came to Jesus by night, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. So he recognized that he was a teacher coming from God, but he didn't recognize him as the Messiah. Like I said, he was a skeptic. He was a skeptic. He could only see what he could see. And a lot of times in our view, a lot of times we look at Jesus and perceive who Jesus is, only what we see. Jesus is only as big as you see with your natural eye a lot of people. They look at him in the flesh. We know that he's the healer. We believe that by faith. We believe that. But we're going to have to come to the place where we look beyond and know that he's from God. And know that he brings life, know that he brings healing, and know that he's all power, but you're never going to see that with your natural eye. You're going to only see that by the eyes of faith. Yeah. Yeah. See, the thing is, a lot of people try and uh, convince people, this is why I believe that, because so-and-so said, because I felt this way or I felt that way. But when the Holy Spirit comes in and he begins to do a new work in you at, at the moment of new birth, when you become a child of God, the witness is there and the evidence is there. There's no need for you to have to explain any other way but the change that took place, the transformation that took place in your life. You can only be the witness of what you witness. You can't be the witness of somebody else's witness. But it has to be the witness that you experience within yourself. I know that I was in bondage, but he set me free. I'm not talking about the life that I live. I'm talking about in here, this life. I was free in a moment. I had peace in a moment. I had joy in a moment. I had complete freedom over everything. There was no fear whatsoever when I came to the Lord. There was no question that I was not able to finish this race that I'd begun to, to run that race. And the reason I'm talking to you about this, we have to get back to the basics of that thinking. Some of us are so wrapped up in knowledge, trying to get knowledge. The Bible says there, there are those that, that are trying to get knowledge over and over, but never really attaining to it. Never really coming to the truth. But I want to talk to you this morning about truth, a simple truth that will get you from here to eternity. Yeah. 
And if you can if you can get into this and dial into this, what I'm talking about this morning, it'll take you past sickness, it'll take you past fear, it'll take you past stress, it'll take you past frustration. So let's go reading here again. Verse 3. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Did you get it? Yeah. Was it that easy? Jesus said, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I'm saying to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you're born again, you see the kingdom of God. All kingdom comes and, and goes before you and surrounds you. You live in the kingdom. You're part of the kingdom. You're a child of the living God. You're king's, or, yeah, the king's kids. We have to get that in our spirit. We keep saying it over and over in different ways, but you need to get it in your spirit. Don't wrap it up in your mind. You're not going to get it in your mind. Get it in your spirit. You belong to God the Father who sent His Son that He would die for you and He sent His best and He sent His best love and He sends the power of the Holy Spirit to live this life out. That's the simple part of the Gospel. And if you know the gospel, it's not only easy for me to live by, it's easy for me to witness by. So many times we're frustrated, and they, they'll, they'll try and trip you up every single time. Well, what do you think about once saved, always saved? Or what do you think about Sabbath being on the Saturday? Huh? Or what do you think about three, or three persons in one? Or, 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 or. Or when's the tribulation? Things we can't answer. We can only assume by some of the scripture, some of the things are in there. But there's some things that you can't get an answer. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. And he clearly states we don't know. So if I'm in the middle of pre-trib, guess what? And he comes, who cares? If I'm in the beginning of pre-trib, who cares? Or, or at pre-trib, who cares? If we go to post, which we're not, but if we go to post, who cares? The bottom line is that here remains the fact. That he came and he died for me. He sent his son. And he's the only scape that I have. And I belong to the kingdom. Yeah. And if we can keep it that simple. We're not so frustrated about. Oh what am I supposed to be doing? Oh what, what, what's my calling? What's this? What's that? And the enemy beats you to death with it. Over and over and over. To make you off your game. To where you can't just stand there and say. I'm a child of the living God. I'm from the kingdom of God. And all the resources are from the kingdom of God. He doesn't hold anything back. He delivered me. He set me free. He heals me. All those belong to me. And I'm going to wait upon Him. And I'm going to walk this life out. Just because you get hurt, do you skip out on work? Most of us push through. And I, I, I want to say this, because I'm not slamming nobody. Because we have some warriors in the house. We have warriors in the house. And I'm talking about people who have gone through sicknesses and through some major things in their life and they're still pushing on. They didn't quit. They still showed up for work. So I don't want you to think that I'm speaking that at all. I understand. But sometimes it's a waiting time. But yet God's victory is right there around the corner. God's victory is around the corner. And you have to remember that His kingdom come, His will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You belong to that kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom has come unto you. When we come to that as a child of God, the kingdom has come. We're not waiting for a kingdom. We're not waiting for a king. He's already king. The kingdom is already established. Everything that is part of that kingdom is already done. And that's what we have to remember. And if you remember that every, every day, you should be able to get up with a breath of fresh air and say, I belong to the kingdom. Right. Oh yeah, hell's going to break loose today maybe. But you know what? I still belong to the kingdom. I may be limping around and hurting today, but you know what? I still belong to the kingdom. I'm still a king's kid. It doesn't change. And if we can get that in our spirit, then we can preach and witness from that and say, no, I belong to the king. What do you mean? You're not. You, you belong to the king. Yeah, but you can belong to the king too. Because the thing is, is you don't belong to the kingdom unless you're a child of God. Would you like to know Jesus Christ? And maybe it'll bring you some more uh, understanding. But I'm not going to get caught up in the argument of everything. We don't know the argument of everything. We just want to speak the things of God. We want to stay with the, the simplicity of God. This is what I want to talk. That's what I'm trying to talk to you about this morning. Let's go on verse four. And Demas saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? 
Again, the natural mind. Trying to reason it out. Trying to figure it out. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Truly, truly, or verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We have to be born of the Spirit. We have to be born of the water and born of the Spirit. What does that mean? That means I have to be in this flesh body. I have to come and I have to die out. I have to, to experience God. But yet I have to be born of the Spirit at the same time. I have to be flesh and blood. I have to be Spirit. Angels cannot receive salvation. Only you as human beings can receive salvation. And when the Spirit comes in, it takes a new place. And it empowers you with a new power. And that's what we're failing at. We're not allowing the Spirit of God. We're not following after the Spirit. They that we are to be led by the Spirit. It says that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You're not going to fool, fulfill the things that totally struggle. You struggle with day in and day out on a human effort fight. But you deal with them in the spirit realm because you're a spirit. Because you're a child of the living God. So verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. It says the wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou... Heareth the sound thereof, but canest not tell whence it cometh and whether it goes. Is it every one that is born? Is is it? It is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak. That we do, we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. This was a Pharisee. This is one who is a religious leader, and he missed it. And our church world is in that position today. We miss the understanding of what the Spirit is here, that you have all power because of the Spirit of God, because you're a child of the living God. That's what he's telling them. But we as a church world, we seem to continue to, to move into a carnal mind, a carnal position. Even though you're a Christian, even though you're a child of God, we still let the flesh rule. The message that, that Laverne brought forth was talking about that very thing. We need to get our eyes off of what we see and what we're hearing. The world is going to dictate everything around us if we allow them to. But you can walk out of here free today. In a given moment, just by lifting your hand and saying, you know what, I receive, God, all that you have for me. I'm a child of the living God. I'm in a different kingdom. And yeah, the winds may come and the waves may go and the wind, and all of these things begin to happen that come against me. But it doesn't change who I am. Yeah. It doesn't change who I am. It doesn't change my position. But I am a child of the living God. I'm not stressed out. I don't know about you. I don't stress out. I don't freak out. I don't get all bad and angry. I get accused of it sometimes. Joe, so you're mad. I'm not mad. I'm just loud. But I'm talking that, you know what? I've come to the realization who I am in Christ. And I've come to the, the vulnerability of who I am as a human being. And I give that over to God. Because he's made strong in my weaknesses, it tells me. And I want to make sure that everything, every weakness that I would have humanly possible... I'm going to give to him. I'm going to rest in him. I'm going to trust him. So that makes it, why well, I don't have to stress. My God is bigger than any circumstance, any situation, any time frame. That's the biggest one we're dealing with right now is time frames. Many of us want to be healed. Many of us want to get past our circumstances and our situation. But we have to understand that it's God that is the giver of all gifts. Even though it's sitting there for you, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming. You hold on, you hold on, you hold on. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. We're right on the brink of the changes of a lot of things are getting ready to break. And I can say that for a fact. The darker it gets, the, the higher he rises up. And it's getting pretty dark right now out there. But the Lord is raising up. We're seeing people come back. We're seeing people being called. We're seeing people being dealt with. We're seeing other nations and everything else declaring God. We're, we're hearing it across the news. And I don't say everything is, is Christian. But God's name is getting around. Sure. God's doing some great things. And the revivals are breaking. I'm praying for a revival to break in this place. We need a revival. We need a revival in this house. 
We need to be sensitive to what the Spirit is saying, what He's doing. We need revival. And that can only come when we begin to pray for it. Pray about it. It may call, we may call a fast. The Lord's been dealing with me about a fast. And that's what we may have to do. We may have to fast and pray for revival to break in here. Not to bring other people, that's great. I mean in here, to where we get on a chain, but we're walking in here, we're walking in the same, the same light, the same walk. Not week after week, not time after time, not situation after situation, but walking in a steady pace. Doesn't mean you're always gonna be up, jumping up and down happy, not necessarily. But you're going to be consistent. You're going to be consistent because it's not an emotion. It's not a smile. Just because I'm not smiling don't mean that I'm, I'm weak in, in my spirit, that I don't trust God. Or because I'm sad doesn't make me weak in my spirit. I understand no matter what I feel or what I think or what's going on around me doesn't have any bearing whatsoever. That he's still all power and that's who I trust. That's who I lean on. That's who I'm looking to. My biggest thing that I struggle with is I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to be a failure in this time. But I want to be sold out to God with everything, with my whole heart, with every thought, with every intention. I want to fulfill what God has called me to do in my life. That's my goal. And a lot of times I feel like I fall short. You know, and I'm not looking for any, any downtime between me and my father. I, I don't want to displease him. No, we can't be perfect as far as what man says, but I can be perfect in the eyes of God. I can be totally sold out this morning. Hey, let's get down here. So I want to keep it short. Let me read 12 again. If I have told you earthly things, ye believe not. How shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? That's a mouthful. We pretty much already covered that. But that's a mouthful just to reflect on. Jesus is telling him, a ruler of the Pharisees, the ruler of the people who knew the word 13 and no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that cometh down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life Think about that. These are ones we skip over because we're so familiar with John 3.16. And 15. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How does that fit into your world? Think about it. Nobody can snatch you from God. You have eternal life. If you believe in Christ Jesus, you have eternal life. It's secure that you have eternal life. So don't let the enemy try and pull you off to the side and tell you that you're not a child of God. We may fall down, but we got to get back up. And if we sin, it says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And we get right up where we fell down, and we get up and we march forward. I've learned to do that. It was so difficult in the first part of my walk with God because I would fall down and I would go through the condemnation for days and weeks and sometimes years and never, ever, sometimes, ever get over it. Because it was always in the back of my mind. You blew it, you blew it, you blew it. And we have to get to the place where we understand that it was finished. It was done. Jesus bore the, cro the, the cross for our sicknesses, for our disease, for our sins, for our deliverance. And we have to understand that in that moment, when I go to him and I repent, it's done. It's not to be remembered no longer and brought up against me. I've been acquitted from it. It's like when you walk into a courtroom and the judge says, not guilty, and you've been acquitted. I don't believe that they call you back next week and ask you, hey, I wasn't sure if you, know, if you really acquitted me. No, I ran for the door many times when they acquitted me. When they told me not guilty, oh, I never looked at that back to see that judge again. And that's the way it should be a children of God. Don't look back at anything. You've been acquitted by God himself. And when you're acquitted by God, you're in a position in order to walk in this kingdom and all the freedoms, all the perks, if you might say it, that he has for, for the kingdom you have. You have. I'll say it again. We try to come in the back door and come to the front. You're not a servant. He does no longer call you servant. He calls you friend. You are a son and daughter of God. And that's just the way it is. Nothing could change that. 
because he wore it. He put the words in there. I did. He put the blood on the cross. I did. It was finished. I'm almost done. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever, whosoever what? Believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the scripture I've been trying to head to. Right there. If you can live by this scripture alone and know it was God that loved you and the whole world that he gave. He paid the price. You don't pay the price. He paid the price. Many of us are trying to pay the price. We're trying to earn our kudos with God. It's paid for. It's done. It's all we owe him is praise. We owe him praise. That's all we owe him. Yes, we owe him our lives, but I'm talking about in that instant when things begin to happen, we can't earn it. We can't beg for it. It's done. It's finished. He gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I'm going to close here with this message this morning. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We put more condemnation on ourselves. I know he's talking about something here, but I'm talking about the church today. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Quit condemning yourself. If you've got something to condemn yourself for, go to God. Give it to God. Get back up. I shared this, this story a long time ago, but it's always a good story. There was a friend of mine who came from Winters, and he heard that I was a Christian, and we used to run and do all kinds of crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And the last time he seen me, I wasn't in the best of shape. But he heard that I was a Christian, and he had a little church background. We all grew up in the same church up there up north. But we didn't reflect that. So anyway, he calls down here. He says, Lynn, he goes, I heard you, you got your life together and everything like that. He goes, uh, can I come down there and stay with you? And so me and Cheryl, we just uh, had Landon, huh? Yeah, we just had Landon. And I invited him down. She didn't know him. She was graceful and reluctantly let him come in and stay. But I knew him. He came and stayed with us. And one of the things he did, he came and he started getting right, coming to church. He started working. We got him a job. He bought a trailer. He was living out there right where Lynn, Lynn is at now. He was living out there. He was doing pretty good. But he called off the wagon one day, and I was the foreman, and I had to go pick him up to bring him to work. Well, he went out and got drunk all of whatever week or whatever like that. <laughs> it was pretty long. And uh, that was his problem. He was dealing with a lot of alcohol. And so... I, I got my story messed up. I jumped ahead. Because the time I'll, I want to talk about is the time when he stayed, when he was still staying with us. Forget the last part of that. Anyway, he was staying with us before he moved to the trailer. The other is another story. I'm not going to tell that one. He about blew it. But anyway, so he came and stayed with us. His brother came down. And he went and watched the football game with his brother. Remember? And then he came back. And he had been drinking. And he was... I, he goes, I blew it. But so? He goes, yeah, but I blew it. Yeah, so? I go, did you fall down here? Did you fall down over there? Wherever you fell down, you get up right there where you're at. You know, it's funny because Cheryl wasn't here in the conversation. She comes out of the trailer. We lived in the trailer at that time. And she comes out and she, he turns to Cheryl looking for another answer. He goes, Cheryl, I blew it. So where'd you fall down at? I mean, it's that simple. Where'd you fall down at is my point. You fell down, you fall straight down. Usually I don't fall down and find myself out there in the gutter somewhere. I fell down right where I was at. 
And when I come to myself, I get up at that moment. And guess what? I'm back in the same position. I don't have to work my way to anything because I was forgiven before I blew it. And so when I blew it, I'm still in the same location, the same position. I'm still a child of God. I still belong to the king. The kingdom is still at my disposal. And I get up right where I was at and I continue on and I move forward. And if I get anything to you today, we belong to the kingdom of God. God is not one that comes and condemns us and presses us down and puts us to death. He pulls us up by the hand. He sent his son for you and I that he would lift us up from this filth, from this world and bring us to a place of peace, a place of calmness, a place where we can have dignity in our own lives, in our family's lives. God has the best for us. And when we realize that one single truth, I blew it, but I'm back up. I'm back up and I'm ready to go, baby. And that's just the way it is. And then I don't care what anybody else says about it. It's between me and God. It's between you and God. If you're falling down right there, I don't care if the whole church stands there and points a finger and you say, no, I'm going to stand right here where I was standing before I fell down. Because Jesus Christ, the righteous, is my advocate. And I went to Him according to the Word. And I repented. And today I'm back where I belong. And I'm going to continue to go forward from that moment. I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to let the enemy tell me about it. Oh yeah, you blew it yesterday. Yeah, big deal. I don't know who that was. That was some dude who was just tripping because I'm back up and I'm back in the game. Hallelujah.